What I wanted to actually show, Microsoft Teams Toolkit V2 is still in preview, just to be clear, but you can already test it out and, and provide us feedback on how we can improve this. But in the 2.5, 2.7 version, we have a native support for debugging SharePoint Framework solution directly in the Microsoft Teams workbench. And this is insanely cool because it's going to help so much as we build those solutions uh, uh, to be available. So let me actually do this. Um, <laughs> maybe I should actually slow down my energy and, and speed up talking. Now, let me create a Microsoft Teams application um, and let me a bit of a zoom this so you can more easily find and see what I'm doing. I'm not going to do code as such. I'm more showing how things are working in the Teams toolkit. So I'm going to create a new solution. It's going to be a tab solution. I'm running the 2.7 version of the Teams toolkit. And the question number three is basically, are you looking in the hosting or are looking in the building a Teams tool, team solution which is hosted in Azure? Or do you want to take out uh, advantage of automatic hosting and still implement your stuff using TypeScript and all of the web stack development tooling? And that's what we want to do here. So we don't have that complexity of designing cloud hosted solution. Again, the matter of opinion. And in many cases, if you have already an existing solution, then you're bringing that to the likes of Teams. You don't necessarily build SharePoint framework solution. Now, let me create a, a solution which is a normal uh, plain TypeScript, not using React. And let's call this uh, TypeScript. I can't write. It's pretty typical. TypeScript and uh, debug uh, demo as the solution. And uh, let's call that debug uh, demo. And I will select the folder and I will go two step up and I will create a folder TypeScript uh, demo. Hopefully there's nothing confidential visible in the left navigation. It's good to call that out always so that you're really paying attention on it. So let's give the application name a name. At least I'm not showing hopefully any passwords as I'm doing that. Um, we've had that in the Ignite a few years back. So let's call this a debug uh, demo. And Pat Miller still hears about that mistake, by the way, every single time he's presenting. Now, I'm going to trust the authors. This is my solution. It created me the solution uh, with an example structure for SharePoint framework. Uh, the structure is a bit different as we're using the Teams toolkit because we have the, the app package. Let me actually extend, the extent that. As we're using the Teams toolkit, the app package is actually stored in a separate folder above or as a sibling to SPFX. So it's a bit different approach as if you are using Yeoman Generator. We are looking into alignment here across the Teams toolkit and the SPFX Yeoman Generator so that it's familiar for everybody how these things actually work. Now, if you are familiar with SharePoint Framework, you are familiar that how the structure will look like. We have a web part. In this case, we created the web part. It's TypeScript standard web stack development. I can do debugging, all of that stuff. Um, as I'm opening this up, um, you pretty much, or maybe you noticed, it was insanely fast to get this one up and running. And that's because we didn't run NPM install yet. And that's also the reason why we're still getting missing declarations and all of that stuff in here. So we're kind of a one way of making things faster, but then as we're doing development, it doesn't really make us faster. And again, we're looking into adjusting uh, some of this stuff as well based on uh, feedback. But let me actually do something really, really cool, and this should actually work. It's going to take a while because we're going to run npm install, and I'm, I'm going to talk something as we're doing that. Um, but I'm going to put a breakpoint in that solution, in that uh, inner HTML, where we're actually rendering uh, the output. Let's call this welcome to Microsoft Teams. This is unfortunately using still the older, older template version. We're going to do modifications on that uh, significantly as well. And then uh, save is a good thing to remember. There we go. So that's saved. And then I'm going to go back in the Teams toolkit side. Oh, sorry. I'm going to go back in the run and debug. And then I'm going to see what are the options which I have available for debugging. And this is really, really interesting. So we do have a new option here available starting from version 2.7 of the Teams Toolkit, which isn't yet documented even for outside of the Teams Toolkit. Technically, this works without the Teams Toolkit as well. So you can do debugging of the SPFX solution directly in the Microsoft Teams Teams Workbench. Microsoft Teams, 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 Teams Workbench. That makes sense. So let me, uh, for the sake of uh, mixing some of the profiles, I'm going to take a Chrome as the debugging target. I'm going to do F5 or click play. 
And what's going to happen here is that the Teams Toolkit is going to take every single thing what is needed automatically for me, which is actually really, really cool. Now, this is going to take a while. Uh, so let's see if there's any questions and uh, in the topics. Um, but technically, what we're doing here is that we're running now the NPM install. That's going to, again, take a few minutes um, because there's quite a lot of dependencies on the SPFX solution structure. Um, but it's going to install all of those types, all of those things in the type screen. And then it's going to actually install the solution to the team's tenant. And then it's going to start my Chrome browser. And then we should be hitting that line 19 in a debugging mode if everything goes as planned. Now I'm actually pretty sure that this will not work. Oh, well, let's see. Now that I'm, I'm, I'm making so much excitement that most likely the demo will fall. That typically happens. No, just kidding. But they technically what we're doing here, the team, I'm, I'm going to repeat, the Teams Toolkit uh, version 2 is still in preview. This is the version 2.7, which I'm running here. And, um, and it has this new capability. We're working on actually getting documentations of this Teams Toolkit also when you are using just the Yeoman generator. So if you're doing a development of Microsoft Teams development directly with SPFX from the Yeoman generator, which is 100% supported as well, um, and that is that this is an option. So you're able to basically use the Teams Toolkit, what is it, Teams Development Dashboard. That's the right term. Yes, I guess so. So let's see. Now it's starting. Starting. All of the automation is doing its magic. It's doing all of the debug, to, uh, debug strings, all of that stuff. Pretty soon it's going to fire. Well, now it's going to do the webpack. And that didn't take too long. It actually did fire the Chrome in my previous in another window. So I'm going to move it back in here. Why did I use Chrome? Uh, just so that I'm actually using a different profile rather than my default profile in Edge Chrome. And I'm going to sign in here. I'm going to use my password to sign in. Here we go. And I don't care. Yes, stay, stay signed in. We can see that on behind of the scenes, uh, the debuggers and everything else are doing their magic. It's going to now move the Microsoft Teams. It's going to now ask me to get that solution directly installed in the tenant. So I didn't do anything else than just created the solution and click at F5. So it's doing all of this automatically for me. I'm going to click to add a solution in the Microsoft Teams. And one, two, three, four, we should be hitting the breakpoint after. It's going to remind me that, hey, we are debugging from local host. So let's actually run debugging strings. And behind of the scenes, we can already see a yellow line. And we have a breakpoint available uh, in the Microsoft team, uh, sorry, in the Teams toolkit. And this means then that right now I can do something like this context SDKs, uh, Microsoft Teams, uh, context. It's pretty awkward that it comes twice. And then I can do something like host client type, and it's going to tell me where all of the properties. So basically, I'm able to do debugging directly inside of the Visual Studio code without me really doing any additional tricks or anything like that. And that's actually pretty, pretty cool. Oh, thank you. Aush uh, Havara. I'm probably pronouncing your name wrong, but thank you, thank you for the feedback. So this is actually really, really cool. And it's going to help a lot on, on doing implement the SharePoint framework implementation towards Microsoft Teams, uh, either in the Microsoft Teams toolkit. So again, in the Teams toolkit, we is for 2.7. Uh, is it 2.7? I guess it is. Let me double check that as well. Uh, which version I'm actually running? There it is. Uh, so it's 2.7. Uh, that's natively included. So it's just an F5 to be clicked. And we are also looking into documenting this for the Yeoman generator. And this is the first time I'm showing this to anybody live. So because we need it to actually have some additional uh, content on the on the session as well. So. So hopefully that's kind of interesting. Uh, please do give us feedback related on Teams Toolkit and how we can improve things. Uh, if you test it out, if something isn't really feeling good or something isn't working, please to, to let us know. Right now, we know that in the Teams Toolkit, we do have 
a bit of a interesting setup where we are kind of a bypassing the SharePoint framework human generator. We're looking into alignment there as well. So you could use the Teams Toolkit V2 in the future for creating SharePoint framework web parts, Microsoft Teams personal application, Microsoft Teams meeting application, Microsoft Teams uh, configurable tabs, or Viva Connection ACES. So we're looking into having all of the different uh, scenarios available directly in a single tool. And that should certainly help rather than having multiple competing tools and, and um, things to install available, just one. And then it's a matter of, do you want to have your application hosted in Azure or in the Microsoft 365? And that's then defining the experience. Cool. Now I have to ask if somebody was following up on the chat. Did I miss any, any good questions and, and things and uh, which I didn't answer? So there's a good question from our Rush here. Uh, SharePoint Toolkit will be also there in the future. What we're looking into doing is, is basically having a one uh, toolkit. Uh, so we're working with the Teams Toolkit V2 uh, people rather than introducing a SharePoint Toolkit and a Microsoft Teams Toolkit and a Viva Connection Toolkit and whatever comes to mind toolkit and something what we're going to release maybe in a year toolkit. And let's have one. And then it's a matter of where do you expose your components? What are you actually building? Uh, it's going to provide all of the different options. The Teams Toolkit traditionally, obviously, was targeting Teams only. Um, Viva Connection is a really good example of a of a experience which is Microsoft Teams and SharePoint and OneDrive all together. So we're trying to get away from this uh, isolated. You need to select the service or select the tool rather to a what are you implementing? This is the tool. What you can do. Uh, this question, how can we use this workbench for developing uh, bots on Teams, not just tabs? Could you please document this as well? So there is a, a really good documentation actually available already on the Teams toolkit uh, on the on the creating of the of the bots as well. Now, word of reminder, Teams toolkit uh, v2. So there is documentation already available on this. It is still in preview, so it's not yet GA. Uh, so it's basically intended to be used not in production. Uh, so we're, we're hoping that people would actually use uh, use this tooling, provide us feedback, and then we can release that um, uh, available. Um, there are multiple ways of doing then uh, multiple things what you can use with, do with the Teams toolkit, including creating bots and other experiences as well. So there is a support for bot and Teams and tabs already available. And it's really, really easy uh, for sure to get started on it. Thank you.